She's making water fast, sir. The mail hold's practically full already. Aren't the pumps working? Yes, sir. Thank you, Carpenter. But the engine room say they'll need more. They're rigging them now. This is most unfortunate, Captain. Yes, sir. Do you think the ship is seriously damaged? I'm afraid she is. Excuse me. Uh, how long is this likely to delay us? Not long, I You struck a bird. I think she's badly damaged. I'd like to know how badly. All right. I'll go down and have a look. Oh, glory, please. Come on. Here we are. Oh, hold on, hold on. We're going to pay again. We'll pay properly. No, wait. Go to the Go to the port. Oh, well played, sir. <laughs> I say, let's go down and join the fun. They're steerage passengers. I get those men up as soon as you can. Yes, I'll I'll do that, Mr. Andrews. What have we stopped for? There's talk of an iceberg, ma'am. I expect we've stopped so as not to run over anything. What's up? Oh, we're stopping, blowing off steam. Something wrong, I don't know what. Come to a bit of ice, I think. Oh, I can't sleep with this racket going on. Do you want me to give you a hand? Oh, I've finished the Cape Race traffic. Oh. Uh, you can help with the accounts, if you like. Well, I'll get some clothes on. You think we'll have to turn back? Oh, don't say it. If we do, we won't get a moment's peace in here. Here's a position. Water in the fore peak. Numbers one and two holes. The mail room and boiler room six and five. That means a gash 300 foot long from there to there, below the water line. Do you agree? Yes. Well? The pumps are keeping the water down in this boiler room, but the first five compartments are flooding. Well, what's the answer? She's going to sink, Captain. But she can't sink. She's unsinkable. She can't float. Look, she could float with any three of her first five watertight compartments flooded. She could even float with four of them gone. But she can't float with all five full up. Yes, but... These watertight bulkheads here only go as high as E-deck. The weight of water in the bow is going to pull her down by the head. So you're going to get the fifth watertight compartment overflowing into the sixth, the sixth into the seventh, and so on as she gets lower. It's a mathematical certainty. With that amount of underwater damage, she can't stay afloat. How long will she last? Just trying to work that out now. As far as I can see, she made 14 feet of water in the first 10 minutes after the collision. It's not very fast. She should live another hour and a half. Yes, about that, I think. There must be no panic. No. You'll be careful what you say to the passengers. Of course. How many people are there on board? 2,200 or more, and room in the boats for how many? 1,200. I don't think the Board of Trade Regulations visualized this situation. Do you? Ha, <laughs> ha, 
Gentlemen, we are in a precarious position. We must be prepared to abandon ship. Mr. Murdoch, you will muster the passengers. Mr. Lightoller, you will have the boats uncovered and swung out. Mr. Boxall, call all hands and get them to boat stations. Mr. Moody, you will help Mr. Lightoller. And Mr. Wilde and Mr. Pittman will remain on the bridge. Everything will be done quietly and calmly. There must be no alarm and no panic. I will give the word when the boats are to be loaded with the women and children. Carry on, please. Captain! Aren't you exaggerating the danger? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, where's Andrews? I'm acting on his advice. This ship is going to founder. But she can't. In any case, we can't get everyone in the boats. I know that, sir. Please God, it won't come to that. <laughs> 